Again, let us uh, now set the 16-4 football for you, and that is that Worcester is inside the five-yard line. It is a second down situation, and they are about two yards away from the goal line. Number 30 is Mark Newcomer, who is the third back in the backfield. Tony Lee, however, carries it in for the score from two yards out. So Worcester goes up 12 to nothing, just 15 seconds remaining here in the first quarter of action. And of course, the extra point try is to come. It may be interesting to see whether Denny Shearer, number 45, comes out for the kick or whether Worcester goes for uh, two. He's going for the two. Yes, it looks that way. And this time we had a messenger guard, Doug Glasgow, number 60, comes in for number 62, which is uh, Corey Huff. Yeah, we've with got the play. two tight ends in there. And the full house, two tight ends, the full house. It's a quarterback keeper. And he's got Matt it. McCoy. So Worcester is able to convert, making the score. Worcester 14, tryway nothing, with 15 seconds remaining here in the first quarter of action. And Tony, uh, Worcester has been able to do it on the ground. They have uh, looked impressive. Uh, certainly the other factor, I think, has to be field position. When you get it uh, in tryway territory, it puts an awful heavy load on a defense to hold the, uh, the offensive team. Uh, it certainly is, but they don't have that far to go, and uh, I'm sure that that injury uh, really uh, deflated uh, the atmosphere in the uh, tryway side of the field. Certainly has to. Denny Shear, number 45, teeing up the ball. The deep backs for uh, the Titans are number uh, 42. That's Jeff Wilson, the injured quarterback. And number 41, Dave Fletcher. There's the whistle. Here's the kick. It's a low-line drive kick. And it is going to be Wilson. Yes, Wilson picks it up. He uh, eludes one tackler and now is brought down just shy of the 25-yard line. Number 90, Mitch Sleek on the tackle for the Generals. Excuse me, Tony. Looks like uh, Corey Hupp, number 62, might have gotten a piece of that action also. First and 10 for the Titans. That ball just shy of the 25-yard line. Split backs, and now there's a whistle. That is quarter, I believe. It you is. are right. So at the end of one complete quarter of play, our score is the Worcester Generals 14, the Triway Titans nothing. We'll be right back. Take nothing and throw a like, take it with a smile. Take nothing and throw a like, make it all worthwhile. Keep your head high, that's a starter. Keep your back straight, it's much smarter. Take nothing, say it right. Good posture is inside. The best tip you can give anyone is protect your health. That includes keeping physically fit and paying more attention to the structural balance of your body. The American Chiropractic Association and your family doctor of chiropractic recommend periodic spinal examinations to guard against spinal health disorders. Good posture not only looks good, it makes you feel good too. So take a good look at your posture while you're standing, sitting, working, or playing. Straighten up and enjoy life. Good posture is in style. Take nothing and throw a right. Good posture is in style. a shot of the triway cheerleaders trying to uh, get a little spirit going with their offense here. Aaron Swisher, Chris Jeffers behind the sophomore quarterback, Scott Flinner, filling in tonight for the injured uh, Jeff Wilson. Jeff uh, has been able to go defensively, but not offensively. First and ten. That was Jeffers into the line. Number 53, Andy Seifert, with help. 
Matt Cotton, number 25, who's uh, in at an inside linebacker position, also in on that tackle, as uh, well as Brian Finnicum, number 59. 59 was the one on the bottom of the pile, John. Brian, of course, was an excellent special teams player last year. Uh, going both th ways this year, he is the offensive center. Second down and about uh, nine. Eyebacks this time. Trybacks, there's three of them back there. Flinner on a keeper to the outside. He's got good yardage. He's got a first down. Yeah. It's John Murphy that finally brings him down, but he's uh, across the 35-yard line. Some fine running there by Young Flinner. It's got to be very difficult for a sophomore, and especially in a, a pressure uh, a situation like this is, uh, against Worcester to come in and handle the offense. But Scott uh, Flinner there making uh, some nice yardage. First down for the Titans, call at the 37-yard uh, line. This time they give it to, uh, look like uh, Jeffers, 45. Chris got, uh, let's call it what, three, Tony? Second and seven. The outside linebacker, uh, number 21, Brad Warner, making the stop for the Generals. Just into the second quarter of action at Triway High School, John Hevlin, along with Tony Catan's right, bringing you all this play-by-play -play action. This time it looked like Swisher. He found a little bit of running room before Matt Smith, number 18, along with some help, brought him down. It'll bring up a third and four situation for Triway. They are uh, just shy of the 45 yard line. At the uh, nose of the ball, just a whisker shy of the 45. They need to get up to the 49. Third down, the pitch to the outside, it's Jeffers. He's hit from behind uh, and uh, did not uh, pick up any yardage. That was good defensive play by number 57. Steve Cooper. Steve came crashing in that time and just followed the ball carrier. Steve is a uh, second year starter at the defensive end position. And uh, let's see, we're going to see a punt and obviously uh, Steve Beckler will not be in to do the punting. I, I haven't picked up a number yet. Number 42. number 42, Jeff Wilson. This was taken on the fly by John Murphy, and he runs it back uh, close to the 38-yard line. Tackles made by number 21, Jason Johnson. We've got... Uh, Excuse me, Tony, 9.08 on the clock. Our score, Worcester 14, Triway nothing. We'll break and be back. Sure, watching. First and 10 for the Generals. High backs, Ferdinand and Tony Lee. This time they give it to John Murphy off his wing position. And it'll be a matter of whether uh, or where they spot it as to how close to first down it is. John picking up eight or nine yards. Just I guess eight. Uh, eight. That's uh, John's first carry, Tony. Uh, he run 14, 15, 16 plays in his first half, John. 14 of them were by Tony Lee, who's unofficially got 80 yards in that first quarter. Not uh, a bad total at all. No. Second down and two for Worcester. This time the give is to Birdno. And... Uh, very close to the first down. We'll have to wait and see where the officials mark it. If it stays where it's at, it would be a first down, but I think they're moving it back. It is at about the 48. Uh, the officials apparently want to measure now. Worcester yet to put the ball in the air. Again, let us remind you that you can find out how your area team did in football action on CATV9's weekend scoreboard. The scores will be seen all weekend, Saturday and Sunday, on CATV9 every 15 minutes. So uh, if you can't wait for the uh, 
local paper to come out. You can flick on the TV, and we'll have the scores for you right there on CATV9. And we do have a lot of the local teams playing tonight. We've got uh, Orville uh, going up to Wadsworth. That ought to be a good game. Waynedale up in Cleveland against Kirtland. And we'll run down the others for you uh, shortly. Third and one, Matt McCoy, quarterback sneak. He is across the 50 for the first down. Smithville travels over to uh, Canton East. And West Holmes plays Dover. 7.50 still remaining before the half. Again, our score, Worcester on top, 14 to nothing. Tony Lee, the tailback for the Generals, junior tailback, has scored twice. That ball is just across the 50 at the 49. High backs, this time John Murphy on that inside handoff. John with good second effort down to about the 44-yard line. Number uh, 61 on that tackle is Rod McRail. Rod is the middle guard defensively, calls the signals, and he has been in on a group of tackles. I said middle guard, uh, where he is now stationed is, is one of the two inside uh, middle linebackers. Tony Lee off right tackle. Tony stumbling a little bit, but uh, if they give him where he reached out and put the ball, it'll be a first down. I do not believe, though. He looked like a pro the way he stretched that uh, arm out to move the ball forward. First down. Yes, it is. Just inside the 40-yard line. So Worcester again using the clock to march down the field. 6.45 remaining here in the second quarter of action. John Hayes, number 44, comes in, whispers the play to Matt McCoy, junior quarterback. Ryan Finnegan, always the first man out of the huddle, over the ball at center. Some defensive movement, and now a whistle. Too much time. Wish to be penalized for delay of game. Tony, I'm trying to remember uh, in my mind here, is that the first penalty on the Generals? No, no they had the another second. penalty, didn't they? A five-yard penalty. Uh, yeah, movement, movement in the line. Right. That's right. This moves the ball back to the 44-yard uh, line and makes it a first and 15 situation for the Generals. Mitch Sleek, number 90, comes to the bottom of your screen. John Murphy is on uh, the wing to the bottom of your screen and now goes in motion to the top of your screen. Tony Lee, the tailback, breaks one tackle and is back down close to the 40. And on the bottom of that pile is number 61 again, Rod McRail. We'll uh, call that a gain of four for Tony Lee and make it to second and 11. John Hayes to the bottom of your screen, split wide. John Murphy wide to the top. Bird, Owen Lee, the handoff is to Tony Lee, left tackle. And he got two or three, but the yardage is getting uh, much tougher inside for the Worcester offense as Cryway begins to tighten down very nicely. Brings up a third and nine situation. And now Worcester is asking for timeout. Here comes Coach McFarland out onto the field with the 5.08 then remaining here in the first half. Again, our score, Worcester 14, Triway nothing. We'll break and be right back. Enjoy great movies. Coach McFarland out with his team, Coach Barron out with his. Uh, 
talking over what uh, each feels they need to do. For the Titans, it's continued to be stingy inside. They are getting tougher, Tony, against uh, Worcester's run. I would look to see uh, Coach McFarland open up a little bit. He's been running nothing but plays up into the middle. Third down and nine. Murphy in motion to the bottom of your screen. And there is the first pass. McCoy throws it across the middle. It is intercepted. intercepted. It is a uh, Number 45, Chris Jeffers, who has dropped back. John Murphy throws him to the ground at about the 34-yard line. Matt McCoy's pass was thrown over the middle. Coach Barron, I think, he had his defense ready for that one, Tony. Chris Jeffers was in excellent position to pick that one off. I think he waited just a little bit too long to throw it, and when he did, the man was standing right this way. So, Dryway goes back to the offense. Worcester on defense. Split backs now behind this sophomore quarterback, Scott Flinner. Wears number nine on his jersey. He's got Aaron Swisher and Chris Jeffers. 4.53 remaining in the half. The handoff is to uh, Jeffers. Jeffers. Gets forward right. for about three or four. Number 25, Matt Totten, one of the inside linebackers on the tackle for the Generals. We'll call that a good three yards and call it second and seven. The ball is resting on about the 38-yard line of the Titans. And again, the splitbacks. Jason Johnson, number 21, flanked to the top of your screen for Triway. Worcester was a little last minute shifting. Splinter down the line, looked like he wanted to pass it. He had to eat that ball, Tony. They put him back to the line of scrimmage, John. 78, uh, McLean, Mike McLean, one of the Worcester generals in on that tackle. But uh, Splinter probably uh, saw that his man was not open. He took the only course available, and that was a heady play for a sophomore. He could have thrown a, a bad pass, but he, he ate it instead. Brings up a third and uh, seven situation. Flinner rolling out to his left. He is being chased by Glasgow, who finally brings him down. And that was a loss of about two. Doug Glasgow, who is an inside linebacker, showed me pretty good speed in chasing down Scott uh, Flinner. Of course, Scott was not uh, using all his speed. He was still looking downfield. He wanted to, to throw. Here's uh, Jeff Wilson. Jeff uh, being called upon because of the injury to Steve Beckler, who was taken to uh, Worcester Community Hospital. There's a nice, nice kick taken by John Murphy on about the 37. He's giving some ground now to the outside. Nice spin move. Gets away from several tacklers and is back to about the 46-yard nice line. Back. Over there for Triway, I'm trying to pick up a number. Looks like Brett Landman, number 82, 6'4", uh, uh, tight end. He's been a real workhorse on defense. So Worcester again uh, comes up with pretty good field position. Ball right uh, across the 45-yard line. 246 remaining here in the first quarter of action. Worcester with one more chance to uh, uh, march the ball down the field. But time, a little bit of an ally for the Titans. A lot of razzle-dazzle. Who did end up with that ball? I believe it's John Murphy. And not much doing. Maybe a yard. But boy, Tony, I could hear the pop all the way up here. And again, I see number 61. Rod McRail on the, the bottom of the pile. He is a real tiger defensively. Clock uh, continuing to uh, move right along. We're down to two minutes. Mitch Sleek to the bottom of your screen. Murphy to the top. It is Brett Birdno uh, for short yardage up the middle. Matt McCoy has only thrown one pass this evening. That uh, was 
complete. However, it was completed to a purple jersey. Well, you know what we age used to say, John? Time you pass, three things can happen. And two of them are bad. I, uh, I've heard that philosophy, but uh, with the <laughs> clock down to 124, I would think the generals would have to put it on the in the air. It's a pass. Hayes in motion this time. No, it's oh, a draw hey. play to Tony Lee. He's got some running room. He's got the first down, or he's very I close. I do not believe he's got it. He slipped down, trying to make a cut. And, and Tony, you may be right. It is very close here. I think we'll probably have a timeout while they measure. I'm sure they will measure it. No, they give it to him. They're not measuring. It was well, that close, though. Yes, it was very close. The <laughs> clock is momentarily stopped with a minute and ten while they move the chains. But then it will start again, and there it goes. Mike McLean comes out, number 78. Mitch Leak to the top of your screen. Hayes again in motion on the wing. McCoy goes back to pass. It's down the field. It's to Mitch Leak. It is knocked down and almost intercepted. It was thrown behind Mitch Leak. And number 41 out there on the coverage was Dave Fletcher. And Dave almost had an interception. Now that does stop the clock with 47 seconds remaining. And now Byway is asking for timeout with 47 seconds remaining. It's been an exciting uh, four yards, Tony Lee. The uh, kick for the extra point was no good. Worcester held a six to nothing lead. Worcester then again able to uh, go in from about seven yards. Tony Lee capping off that drive. And then uh, going for the two points, it was uh, quarterback keeper by Matt McCoy, which gave Worcester the 14 to nothing lead they enjoyed here with 47 seconds remaining. We might mention, uh, we sure would encourage you to stay tuned at halftime because we will have both bands on tonight, both bands performing, Dryway and Worcester. And uh, both of them always put on an outstanding show. John, this uh, looks as uh, a repeat of last week. Uh, the Generals uh, went right down the field last week, two times in the first quarter and scored. I didn't do anything in the second quarter, and we've done identically the same thing uh, tonight. Yes, very similar. Uh, we've got 47 seconds to change that. <laughs> well, Coach McFarlane, you saw him jogging off the field. Now John Murphy trying to adjust his uh, position to the bottom of your screen. McCoy back to pass, looking down the field. Let's fly for John Hayes. It's a little behind him. Did he get it or not? Nope. No, they say he trapped it. John Hayes is <laughs> trying to show the official exactly how he caught it, but the official had good position, and he says no, it was a trap. John has been out there. He and Matt, uh, Mitch Leak both were out there. Um, Corey needed just a little bit more power in that arm. It was a long throw. It was to the open side of the field, the top of your picture. And as Tony indicates, Matt maybe needed just a little more on that ball. It is a third and ten situation. Again, McCoy back to pass. He throws it this time for Murphy. Murphy was bumped, and there is a flag. Dave Fletcher and John Murphy, there, there was a collision. There was contact uh, just before the ball arrived. The yellow flag did go down. <coughs> and it could be a costly penalty for the t against the Titans. Chris Jeffers uh, certainly uh, upset with it. That's another position. one of those calls, John. If the defender had been facing towards the ball, there wouldn't have been any call. I, I don't believe it. As it was, he was defending the man. He was going right at him without even looking at the ball. I think that's a good point to make, uh, Tony. With the penalty, it gives the generals a first down. Remember, that was a third and ten situation. It is just inside the 30-yard line. The clock is stopped with 36 seconds remaining here in the first half. If they are passes, probably enough time for at least uh, three, four plays. McCoy, it's a little pass out there. It is taken by John Murphy. He's still on his feet. 
He scooted down to inside the 20-yard line, and they are calling a timeout for Worcester. John Murphy was slow in getting up. Now he is up. John, of course, is a two-way performer for the Generals, defensive back, offensive uh, uh, wide receiver, and he is an interesting story because he was a, uh, originally a quarterback, and he was converted last year because he was such a good athlete to a wide receiver and had a fine season last year, Tony. He as certainly a did, and he seems to be an all-around type ball player. He loves to hit, and he plays just as well on defense as he does on offense. He runs back punts and kickoffs. I thought he fumbled that ball that time, John. <laughs> well, no, I think he kept, uh, I won't say crawling, because crawling would imply that his knees were on the ground. Yeah. But he was uh, bear crawling, I guess, uh, <laughs> and the official <laughs> allowed that uh, bear crawling yardage. Of course, that action is taking uh, place quite a distance from where we are. Uh, we want to thank, by the way, Triway High School for their hospitality tonight in allowing us to come over to uh, film this game. We, uh, we are, are very appreciative of uh, their hospitality. Doug Dye is the uh, athletic director. No? Hospitality. Okay. Doug uh, is uh, the man who uh, provided the hospitality. Kent Smith is the AD, and we thank him as well. Boy, it's great to have a producer that keeps you straight. <laughs> okay, 28 seconds remaining. Worcester with the ball just inside the 20-yard line. That's Murphy in motion to the bottom of your screen. There are flags and whistles and uh, bells and all kinds of stuff. And uh, I just have a feeling it's against the generals. <laughs> And now I really do as they march back, Tony. No legal procedure. So Triway will certainly accept this five yards, which will mark the ball back to uh, between the 23, 24 yard line. Clock, of course, uh, remains at 26 seconds because that uh, uh, penalty occurred before the ball was snapped. High backs, Birdno and Tony Lee. Behind Matt McCoy. Murphy again in motion. Looking, looking. The ball is down there. There's a man open. Matt Smith. Matt Smith. Touchdown. 23-yard touchdown to Matt Smith. This time they look to the wide side. McCoy did at Murphy and uh, Sleek. And then threw it back to the tight end, Matt Smith. Matt making a nice uh, over-the-shoulder catch for the six points. That broke our second quarter jinx, John. <laughs> Worcester on the scoreboard again with 20 seconds remaining and goes up to a 20 to nothing lead. Denny Shear comes in to try the extra point uh, kick this time. Mitch Sleek to hold. This one is up. And this one is good. So our score remaining. Well, Tony, uh, for the generals who uh, have struggled at least uh, in the passing game, that has to give the junior quarterback, uh, Matt McCoy, a, a big left to be able to, to get that ball in the end zone. It certainly does. And uh, I don't know if you noticed on that last pass, he zinged that. He didn't just lob that. Uh, I think some of his others were thrown a little on the soft side. Uh, that time there, he, he caught Matt Smith out there, and he threw him the ball and threw it in a hurry. For you I think that's what he's going to have to do to, uh, to succeed as far as uh, throwing that ball. I think you're right. For the Titan fans, that, uh, that really hurt. That uh, score uh, with under a minute remaining in the first half, uh, 20 seconds. We've got Jeff Wilson and... Uh, Number 41, Dave Fletcher deep. They'll be trying to uh, get as much as they can and maybe then step out of bounds. Kick is to the top of the field. It's to Jeff Wilson. He fields it uh, on the 10 yard line, back up, making a nice cut to the other side of the field. He was tripped up there on about the 35. 
and it was the kicker again, Shear. Denny Shear, number 45. Clock stops uh, momentarily at 14 seconds. It will be running again, and Fryway may not be able to get off a of play. Well, let's wait and see. Coach uh, Bill Barron may want to regroup. It's at eight seconds. Let's see if they're able to get this play off. Number one, Wally Williams, flanked wide to the bottom of your screen. No, they Didn't do not have enough time. So at the end of the first half, our score is... Yep, I can't spot a number right there. We'll try and pick it up for you as the ball is run back to about the 34-yard line. 32, Dan Edwards returning it for the uh, Worcester Generals. Brett Landman, the gentleman we were talking about uh, just a second ago, was in on the tackle, and Brett uh, made a group along with uh, Rod McRail tonight. First down for the Generals, Ibax, Murphy in motion. The give is to Tony Lee off right tackle, and Tony gets uh, three tough yards before he is brought down. There's Rod McRail, 61, also 82, Brett Landman. The ball is down to about the 38-yard line. Give Tony three, make it second and seven. Matt McCoy waiting for the play. Here comes John Hayes, number 44, in with it. Ryan Finnecum, number 59, out over the ball at center. McCoy, again, it's Tony Lee. Lee was really decked after a pickup of about three. And Tony... The number that's going to be tattooed on Tony Lee's chest is number 61, yeah. Rod McCrail. He is a real hitter. His uh, stats in the program are 6'2", 195, and he certainly is playing like a, a giant tonight defensively for the Titans. It brings up a third down in four situation for Worcester. And this time, McCoy back to pass, and he is going to be decked. Nice play by number 65, Doug Rastetter. Rastetter wasn't going for the fakes, and he drops uh, McCoy back for about a 12-yard uh, loss. Check that. Uh, not 12. Yeah, about 12 yards. Brings up a fourth and 17. The ball back on the 28-yard line of the Generals. And it will be Matt Smith, number 18, doing the punting. Matt had one blocked last week, so I know uh, Coach McFarland spent a lot of time. It's a high, fairly short punt. It looks like it's going to be uh, rolling dead inside the 40, mm -hmm. inside the 35. We've got a flag back here, though. Yes, way back uh, upfield, there is a flag. One of the officials pointing it out to the referee. Under legal procedure against the Generals. It may cost the Generals five more yards if Dryway decides to make them punt it again. The options are being explained to, uh, I believe that's 61, Rod McCrail. Matt Smith may have to kick it again. We've still got 9.30 remaining in the third quarter of action. The score again, Worcester 21. Triway nothing. We are at Triway High School, Triway Field. John Hevlin along with Tony Catanzarite. Matt Smith now punting from uh, about his own 10-yard line. And this one is high, but very short. Very, very short, and it takes a triway bounce and is down inside the 40. Dan Edwards, 32 of the Generals, downing that ball. Matt had a lot of height, Tony, but not much distance no on distance that one. whatsoever. Tony, while we have the teams uh, changing out there, we're going to take a quick break and be right back. Hi, I'm 
Colts Online, Performance Pontiac Colts, GMC Trucks, 1363 Lincoln Way West, Worcester. Stop and see me. Take advantage of our low financing, dependable vehicles, and courteous service. That's Tom Lyons, Performance Pontiac Olds GMC Trucks, your complete transportation center. Hi, I'm Lisa Klein, a freshman guard on the High State women's basketball team. I really enjoy playing basketball, not because I'm good at it, but because I give it my all. And I couldn't do that if I consumed alcohol, and neither can you. Find yourself a sport or activity that you can give it your all, and stay away from alcohol. If you're dedicated enough to your sport or activity, you'll know enough to say no to alcohol. Brought to you by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Cable Television Association. Flyway breaks the huddle. They've got uh, those triple backs behind the sophomore quarterback, Scott Slinner. Jeffers is the tailback in this uh, particular setup, and he gets good yardage. Five yards. Finally bringing him down is Andy Seifert, number 53, one of the defensive tackles for the Generals. Chris looked very uh, strong and, and uh, running hard on that play. Second down and uh, five. And there's Jeffers again for good yardage. He's very close to the first down, being gang tackled down by the Generals. It uh, all right depends on the, on the yard spot. Line. Yeah. So he'll be shy about a yard, John. You are right, Tony. He's uh, shy by less than a yard as they mark that ball. But if I'm not mistaken, this is the Titans' uh, deepest penetration into Worcester territory tonight. Eight minutes remaining here in the third quarter of action. Split back this time behind Flinner. And uh, Flinner on a keeper fumbles the ball. It's loose. And I believe Worcester's got it. Yes, they do. Very unfortunate for Triway. Center looks like he may have hurt his hand. He's uh, coming off holding his hand. <coughs> I believe his hand was hit as he went to make the turn up, and that's when he lost the ball. Tony, again, while we have uh, this uh, change in uh, possession, we're going to take time and be right back. Mott's Decorating. They're serious about quality, and you should be too. At Mott's Decorating, they want happy and satisfied customers, and that's why they're serious about quality. There are no gimmicks, no giveaways, just honest savings every day of the year at Mott's Decorating. 4188 Cleveland Road, Worcester. Phone 345-6018. For paint, carpet, wall coverings, ceramics, vinyls, and more, one-stop decorating at Mott's Decorating on Cleveland Road, Worcester. After the big game or for your next party or get-together, stop by Dino's Drive-Thru to pick up your favorite potato chips, candy bars, or other snacks. Dino's Drive-Thru has a large selection of everything you need to make your next party a big hit. With two convenient locations at the foot of Bell Avenue and on Lincoln Way east of Worcester, it's Dino's Drive-Thru. Make sure you put Dino's on your next party list. Worcester first and ten. Murphy in motion to the bottom of your screen. I back the give is to number 32, Dan Edwards. Dan running hard out to the 35. And looked very good on that. Tony watched, uh, I watched Dan in the last uh, scrimmage against the Lions, and Dan ran very well that night. I'm glad to see him get a chance to do some running here in an actual game. Dan is a 5'11", 185-pound senior, and, of course, is uh, spelling Tony Lee, who's been going both ways tonight offensively and defensively. John Hayes to the bottom of your screen. John Murphy to the top. Again, the eye backs behind the junior quarterback, Matt McCoy. And Edwards again, uh, getting up close to two first down territory. 
inside. That it looked like be. number. I it is first down, John. Yeah, it looked like number 65, uh, Doug Rastetter, made the uh, defensive stop. That is the first down. Ball right up around the 38-yard uh, line. First and 10 generals. Clock down to 640. McCoy keeping, looking to pass. Throws a wobbly pass down the sideline way behind Mitch Sleek. I don't know if he uh, released that too soon or if it might have been tipped, Tony. Uh, it seemed like he just didn't have anything on it. I, I think as he went to throw, he saw that Mitch Sleek was going down where he was throwing out. And uh, usually uh, if you try to throw and you're trying to hold back, it just wobbles out there. Good defensive covered by the Titan, and I did not catch a number, but he was on uh, Mitch Sleek like a glove. He certainly was not open. Second and 10 for the Generals. Inside handoff to Burno, right down the middle of the veil. Brett Burno is all the way down to about the 32-yard line. That is by far his best run of the season. Tony, I have been told that Brett Burno is uh, as quick as Tony Lee, that they are very close on, on speed. And Brett uh, showed some good speed on that one. The spot on that is at the 33-yard line. 5-5-5, five, 5-55 five, 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 five remaining here in the third quarter of action. McCoy throws it out to John Murphy, puts a head fake and a twist on. Uh oh he fumbled the ball. So John Murphy, after a nice catch, tossed up the football inside the 20, call it the 18. John very upset with himself. He's a fine young man who has gone both ways for the Generals, but that time he lost the ball, and Triway has recovered. So with 541, Triway will try and get something going and get right back into this ball game. Swisher and Jeffers in the uh, eye backfield behind Flinner. Flinner is back in there. That hand injury was not too serious. That give was to Jeffers, and he really bulldogs ahead for some good yardage. As Coach Barron says, he just keeps coming. Looked like number 78, Mike McLean, was on the tackle for the Generals defensively. But uh, Jeffers got about uh, seven yards. Let's remind you again that you can find out how your team did on uh, football action right here on the CATV9 scoreboard. It'll be on every 15 minutes during the weekend. Second down in a long three. And uh, Jeffers, Not nothing doing time. that time. That's number 59. 59 would be Brian Finnegan. And he just loves to hit, doesn't he? <laughs> yes. Brian is a young man who is definitely in good physical condition. He uh, he just keeps going and going and going. Third down now, and still that long three for Triway. That uh, triple I backfield. And it's Jeffers again, and not much doing for him. Got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was about it, John. I see Brad Warner, 21, number 60, Doug Glasgow getting up off that pile. Uh, uh, Matt uh, Totten, number 25. Three or four gold jerseys were in on the tackle that time. Chris didn't have much of a chance to make any yardage. And it brings up another punting situation for Jeff Wilson, number 42. Sure hope uh, Jeff can get back to full-time action soon. He gets away a nice kick. John Hayes fumbles the ball and falls on it back on about the 47-yard line. It bounced right off John's shoulder pads, but he was able to recover. Yeah. 
Worcester again starting with good field position. 325 remaining here in the third quarter of action. We'll try and pick up any uh, changes in Worcester's offense. Here comes Matt McCoy in, the quarterback. We did mention that uh, Dan Edwards, number 32, had gone in a tailback on that last series. He's still in there. In front of him is the fullback, is Brett Ferdinand. And McCoy goes to the air. He throws it to Matt Smith. Matt with a nice catch, showing you uh, some good running as well. Inside the 30, call it the 28-yard uh, line. That's sec Matt's second catch of the night that I can recall. Caught the first one for a touchdown. And Coach McFarland uh, opening it up here in the third quarter now with a 21 to nothing lead here at uh, Triway High School. Worcester able to uh, put 21 points on the scoreboard, uh, the third score right before half. And uh, thus far, second half, uh, neither team has been able to get it into the uh, end zone. Ryan Finnecum sprints out over that ball. High back, uh, there was a misplay. And the ball is knocked down. I, it was, uh, they were in motion anyway, John. It's been off or not, they're going to get a five-yard penalty. Well, I, I thought that they would whistle the play dead even before it started. Uh, maybe it started too quickly, but there was a mix-up in the offensive line for the Generals. We might uh, mention that offensive line for the Generals. Again, Brian Finnecum is at center. We've got uh, Mike McLean, Doug Glasgow, Steve Cooper, and uh, uh, Corey Hupp is uh, the four young men who alternate in at the uh, guard position. The two tackles, uh, real big cornerstones for the generals, Mike Pegram and uh, Mike Huddleton, 79 and 76. And of course, then you've got your outside receivers, John Hayes, John Murphy, and Mitch Sleek. Uh, now we've got a timeout being asked for by uh, Triway. And uh, while we have this time out, we might uh, mention to you again that uh, uh, every Thursday night at 6 p.m. you can catch the uh, area coaches. That would be uh, Keith Schrock of Smithville, Bill Barron of Triway, and uh, of course, uh, Coach Bob McFarland of the Worcester Generals on Coach's Corner. That's a show that I host every Thursday evening beginning at 6 p.m. right here on Cable TV 9. One other show that I think I'd uh, better plug here is uh, Panorama, which is hosted by our producer tonight, Mark Lasko, and that also is on uh, Thursday evenings beginning at 5.30. So no sooner do you get home from a hard day at work, just flip on cable TV9, and you can catch a, a very interesting evening of activities right here on cable TV9. Both head coaches out on the field talking with their young men. As we indicated, uh, thus far, it has been a scoreless third quarter. Worcester breaking the huddle. High backs. There's Murphy in motion. To the top of your screen, the handoff to Birdno. And Burton will get uh, right, good, good yardage yard. at the middle. Tony McCoy hit that ball pretty well. I couldn't find it for a minute. Just weren't looking in the right place, John. <laughs> <laughs> it brings up a third down for the Generals. The ball just uh, resting on about the 21 yard line. It's third and a long three yards. Mitch Lee goes to the top of your screen. It's Birdno and Edwards behind uh, McCoy. There's Murphy again in motion to the bottom of your screen. It's Edwards this time up the middle. I think he's going to be short of the first down. He's just slightly short. Of course, the Generals are in four down territory, so we, we look for another play. And uh, if you're a Titan fan, you're really going to be yelling, hold that line, because they can ill afford to give Worcester uh, another score. John, uh, Worcester's line, and I, I, I don't doubt Coach McFarland at all on this, 
Which is why it has been pushing the driveway uh, defense back. I, I don't think he should have any trouble getting this. Edwards again, a very similar play, if not the same play. He's got the first down. They just couldn't get uh, Dan Edwards to go down. He's uh, trying to show Tony Lee that he's breathing <laughs> down his neck as far as that tailback position. It is a first down, and they will move the change. Clock stopped momentarily with a minute and four, remaining here in the third quarter of action. That ball is on about the 18-yard line. Murphy in motion. McCoy back to pass. Looking over the middle, it is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Matt Smith, I believe. Yes, it was Matt Smith. He was there. Matt has already had two catches tonight, but he could not uh, hold on. Good coverage by the triway defender. Might have influenced uh, Matt <laughs> a little bit on that one. John Hayes in with the play for the Generals. Triway's defense has really stiffened here in the third quarter of action. Playing good defensive ball. Dan Edwards, over right tackle, got a couple. And defensively, looks like uh, number 65 made the tackle and may be injured, Doug Rastetter. He's hurting a little bit. It brings up a third and seven situation for the Generals. Mitch Sleek to the top of your screen. Birdno and Edwards. Now Murphy uh, is on the wing. Now goes in motion to the top of your screen. Edwards, no, it's McCoy on a keeper to the outside. Good yardage, first down and more. Tony, how many times do you have uh, McCoy down for on the rush tonight? This was about a six times, John. Well, I might have been premature in calling that a first down. No, the official does signal first down. And uh, there is no time left on the clock. So at the end of three, our score remains Worcester 21, Triway nothing. Look at this choice strip steak dinner or this great tasting chicken dinner. These and many more delicious dinners are available from Degler's Restaurant on Lincoln Way, east of Worcester. In this commercial, we decided to show you how good the food actually looks, not use still photos of dinners like some places. At Degler's Restaurant, these are just a few of the great dinners and sandwiches waiting for you. Stop by Degler's Restaurant in the Wayne Lanes Plaza. Edinger's Furniture is this area's leader for top quality, well-built furniture at a price you can afford. They carry a large selection of recliners, just the thing for the weekend sports watcher. Edinger's has recliners for as low as $99 by fine companies like Lane & Franklin. Edinger's also has Eagle & Acme brand pick groups available in over 100 different fabrics for only $549. Edinger's is also your mobile home supply store for such items as replacement windows and plumbing fixtures. Edinger's Furniture in the Heck Shopping Center on Lincoln Way, East Worcester. Well, we're getting ready to enter the fourth and final quarter of action, the last 12 minutes of the game, and Worcester marching again here towards a, uh, a score that would perhaps put this game almost completely out of reach. Dryway, however, played a very valiant third quarter, defensively especially, not allowing the Generals uh, uh, to get on the scoreboard. Ball uh, being very carefully spotted on, uh, I'm going to call it the six yard line, Tony. Six is good, John. So it is first and goal to go. Let's see if Coach McFarlane uh, has the full house backfield in there. No, he does not. Dan Edwards remains the tailback. Uh, Brett Bergno is the fullback. 
And there's a flag and a whistle before that play begun, began. We'll wait and see. Probably the alignment of someone. And it looks like they're pointing uh, towards the purple jerseys. If they do, of course, it would be half the distance to the goal line, taking the ball in close to the three-yard line. Worcester does like to go over their tackles. Uh, Mike uh, Pegram, Mike Huddleston, two young men that uh, both right around uh, uh, 250 pounds. Once they, once they get their legs churning, uh, makes it uh, tough for a defensive man to stay in there. There's Dan Edwards. He fumbled the football. That ball is fumbled in the end zone. And it looks like it's uh, the Triway Titans that do recover in the end zone. Dan Edwards was down close to the goal line, but he coughed up the football. So the Titan defense holds and turns the ball over for the offense. And while we have this change of possession, we'll take uh, time out and be right back. As you're watching the great sports action, wouldn't a pizza like this one taste great? Then call 264-0571 for the Pizza Bowl and let them bring a pizza, sandwich, or any great menu item right to your door. They offer free delivery and are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Remember the pizza that we just showed you? The Pizza Bowl is waiting to make yours. Call 264-0571 for Degler's Restaurant and the Pizza Bowl. They have the food you're craving for. No gimmicks, no giveaways, just honest savings every day of the year. That's what you'll find at Mott's Decorating, 4188 Cleveland Road, Worcester. Mott's Decorating is serious about quality, and you should be too. At Mott's Decorating, they want happy and satisfied customers that's why quality is spelled with a capital Q. Mott's Decorating, one-stop decorating for all of your vinyl floor, carpet, paint, wall covering, and now new at Mott's Decorating area rugs. Stop by Mott's Decorating, Cleveland Road, Worcester. Of course, on that turnover in the end zone, the ball comes out to the 20-yard line, and that's where the Titans will take possession, first and 10, split backs behind Flinner. Flinner rolling out to his left, looking downfield. He's being pressured, and he is nailed. Number 57, Steve Cooper, from his defensive uh, end position, was the first general to get there. 81, yeah, Chip Yankello. He's in there now. Chip uh, seeing a little bit of action now at the outside linebacker position as uh, Worcester substituting a little bit uh, in there defensively. Forty-two uh, at safety is uh, Jim Vitero is in there in place of Mitch Sleek. Second down and a loss of about ten, so it is second and twenty for Triway. Dropping straight back for a little screen pass out to Chris Jeffers. He's got some running room and he gets good yardage out to about the twenty-seven yard line. A well-executed play Very for the good. Titans. Scott Flinner showed a lot of poise on that play for Certainly a sophomore. Did. Seeing those four big guys come after him, uh, I think I turned around and ran towards the goal. That <laughs> pickup was about 17 yards. That probably was about the biggest gainer of the night for the Titans offense. Locked at uh, 10 minutes, 30 seconds. Worcester up 21 to nothing. Split backs. Oh, Flinner got the Man. whole defensive line to jump on that one. <laughs> See, there was just no doubt. <laughs> now, in the pros, Tony, I, I, the rule might be that the, the defense was drawn off. I've seen uh, back in the days when Brian Seit played for the Browns, uh, they'd call it against uh, the Cleveland Browns. But tonight in high school football there was no doubt that uh, the gold jerseys broke the plane. You remember too in the pros in college you're allowed to get back. Yes. <laughs> a 
First down for the Titans on that penalty. There is Chris Jeffers. Good yardage up the middle. He got uh, close to first down. Nine plus yards on that one. Bottom of the tackle, Brad Warner, number 21 for the Generals. Chris uh, trying to improve on those uh, first half stats. I think he uh, was the leading ball carrier for the uh, Titans in the first half. But if I'm not mistaken, it was only uh, 13 yards. Five carries for 13 yards. Split back behind Flinner. Quick handoff to Aaron Swisher. Aaron uh, dove ahead for uh, two or three tough yards. Well, good enough for first down, though. And it looks like John Murphy, number 11. Uh, and right now the Triway line is pushing most of the defense back. Clock, and of course, Jim Vitero uh, in there, number 42 at yes. safety now. Clock, of course, uh, continues to run as the ball is kept on the ground. Leonard down the line, going to keep on this one, and ooh, number 59, Steve Cooper, really sank his shoulder into him, and uh, then got help from number 25, Matt uh, Totten. Excuse me, 59 is not Cooper, that's uh, Brian Finnecum, 57 is Cooper at the other defensive end. It was Brian that stuck the shoulder in there. <laughs> he said he loves to hit, doesn't he? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I almost said, which we expect from Brian. <laughs> to the top of your screen is uh, Gary Basinger, flanked uh, high up to the top of your picture. That uh, triple back eye set behind Flinner. They give it to Jeffers, and he doesn't get much. It's maybe two yards. Looks like uh, 78, Mike McLean had him by the ankles. And it's going to bring up a third and a long seven for Triway as that ball spotted on about the 46-47 uh, yard line. In with the play number 39. And that's interesting because we don't have a 39 on our program for the Titans. 21 uh, flanking out to the top of your screen is Jason Johnson. That's triple I, and the give, oh no, Flinter never had a chance yeah. to give it off. That Mike McLean, big Mike McLean, who's played defensive tackle since he was a sophomore and who is now a senior, bear hugged Scott down to the ground for no gain, maybe even a loss of a yard or two. And it brings up a fourth down, and I see number 42, Jeff Wilson, so it looks like Triway's gonna be forced to punt again. Deep for the generals are John Hayes and uh, John Murphy. Good snap. Low line drive kick. Murphy comes over and takes it on the 20. Duke step to the 25, breaks to the outside, and is down just shy of the 30. So with 6.57 remaining in the ball game, Worcester uh, gets the ball back. Our score, Worcester 21, Triway nothing. We'll break and be right back. Enjoy great movies like Back to the Future and Return of the Jedi in the comfort of your own home. Just stop by Dino's Home Movies in Worcester and Smithville. With over 1,800 movies to choose from, Dino's has the movie you're looking for no matter what kind. And if you don't have a VCR, rent one from Dino's Home Movies at the foot of Bell Avenue in downtown Worcester and on Main Street in Smithville. It's Dino's Home Movies, open seven days a week. Eddinger's Furniture has bedroom sets. Fine craftsmanship by fine names, like Burlington and Impact. At Eddinger's, you'll find dining room furniture, a large selection priced to fit your pocketbook. Take a look at this three-piece living room set. Eddinger's Furniture specializes in top-quality, well-built furniture that looks good in any home. They also carry mobile home supplies, like replacement doors and plastic pipe. Eddinger's Furniture in the Heck Shopping Center on Lincoln Way East in Worcester. Stop by today. Don't 
Tony, uh, you mentioned just as we went to break that there is a, a inter injured general on the far side. It was uh, John Murphy, the ball carrier. John, as you can see, shaking it off and getting up. And if there's one uh, thing that can be said about John Murphy, he is a hard-nosed kid. He certainly is. John, uh, being attended to over on the sideline, I would not be a bit surprised as a precautionary measure with Worcester having the lead that uh, John may be finished for the night. Again, I say that only as a precautionary measure, and it may not be uh, correct. We'll wait. I would look for Coach McFarland to start putting his second team in there uh, pretty soon. Here, I, I think he probably let these stay in. They get a first down or two, and I then I think that they should go ahead and start putting in his, uh, his second team. Tony, we might mention that next week, uh, Triway's got a, a game against uh, Waynedale, another close rival. Mm -hmm. And uh, Worcester is at home against Jackson. So uh, there's no breathers on the schedule. And in motion, John Hayes. McCoy goes back to pass and overthrows mm -hmm. it, intended for Mitch Sleek. Mitch would have had to be about seven feet on that one. <laughs> yes, let us remind you again that the next Friday night, if you can't get down to uh, Mauer Field to see the Generals, we will have them right uh, here on Cable TV 9 at uh, 11 p.m. Certainly we hope uh, first you can see uh, the game against the Polar Bears at Mauer Field at 8 p.m., but if you can't, stay tuned to us on Cable TV 9. Tony Lee is back in there. Bit of a surprise to, to me that Tony would be back in the ball game. But uh, he sure didn't get much against the Titans that time, the middle of the line. And uh, I've got number 61 in on that tackle again, Rod McCrail. Certainly as time becomes the ally of the Generals, we still have to mention that the Titans uh, have had a lot of bright spots and Rod is certainly one of them tonight. McCoy back to pass, looks over the middle. Uh-oh, there is one that Matt uh, Smith will look back and say, I should have had it. The ball was well thrown, he was open. Uh, as the old saying goes, they hit him in the wrong spot, right in his hand. And it brings up a punting situation for the Generals. Uh, Matt will get a chance to redeem himself in terms of uh, kicking the ball away. Back uh, now in single safety for Triway. Looks to be uh, Jeffers, number 45. Chris Jeffers. Matt Smith is standing on his own 16-yard line to get this punt away. A nice kick this time. It's going over Chris Jeffers' head taking a Worcester roll down to about the 26-yard line. A fine punt by Matt Smith. Chris Jeffers electing uh, not to try and make an over-the-shoulder uh, grab of that one. Let it roll. Let's uh, break on this change of possession, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tom Lyon. Performance Pontiac Gold's GMC truck, 1363 Lincoln Way West, Worcester. Stop and see me. Take advantage of our low financing, dependable vehicles, and courteous service. That's Tom Lyon, Performance Pontiac Gold's GMC truck, your complete transportation center. Dennis Hobson, but most people call me Hop. I'm a junior guard on the Ohio State basketball team, taking a lot of hard work to get where I am today, but that didn't leave time for drugs or alcohol. Not everybody can play basketball like I do, but everybody can work hard to be all they can be, and drugs and alcohol stop you from being all you can be. So find something you enjoy and throw yourself into it. You'll get a high that will last your life. We've got 5.39 on the clock. Uh, Triway trying to avert a shutout. We'll try and uh, march the ball down the field and get a score. The 
it, being led by Scott Flinner, the sophomore. Throws it up. Oh, fantastic move by a sophomore. That pass is complete to number 21, Jason Johnson. And that was a super play. Good, for, looks to me like it should be for a first down. Boy, Tony Scott uh, was going to put it up. He yeah. saw that Jason was covered, pulled it down, waited for him to break open and hit him. Nice play. Andy Seifert uh, just went out. We've got uh, another senior. Which Withrow is in there right now? Might uh, mention that uh, Brett Landman, who I don't believe who has caught a pass tonight, is uh, split wide to the top of your screen. Let's see if they look for the big guy. Flinner's looking. Yes, he now gets it away. It's way over, over his head. Flinner was in traffic. And, and we've got another injury back yes, to number Yes, and 61. it is uh, Rod... Rod McRail. Rod McRail. Looks like it might be uh, his ankle. Rod has gone both ways tonight, and as we have mentioned, he has been fantastic. But uh, he's going to have to come out now. 5-0-1 remaining in this ball game. Worcester getting the opportunity to... Uh, Get some additional uh, experience for some of their younger players defensively here. Dryway uh, trying to avert the shutout. Scott Flinner's got split backs behind him. Aaron Swisher with the ball, and he's nailed in the backfield. Hit first by number 25, Matt Totten, and cleaned up by number 81, which is Chip Yankello. And he lost about a yard on that. It'll bring up uh, third and 11. Chris Jeffers is out, uh, number 39 in that backfield. Is a man we don't have a name for. He is not on our program, but he's back there with Aaron Swisher. Scott looking to pass, pulls it down and is ridden down close to the original line of scrimmage. On his back is uh, number 63 of That's the Generals. Rich Withrow. Yes. He's a senior who didn't play last year, and I, I think that hurt him a little bit. Uh, Rich is a, a large young man. He's 6'1", 265. There's Jeff. I Wilson. know. He's big, John. He cuts my grass. Oh. <laughs> A good boot by Jeff Wilson, taken by John Hayes. John looking for some running room up the middle, and his bulldog down about the 43-yard uh, line. In that particular instance, John decided the quickest path was a straight line, so he just turned up field. Number 25, uh, Mike, I believe it's Nathan, making the tackle there. Mike is a uh, 5'7", uh, 140 pounds senior. I think he's one of the young men you'd say may not be big in stature, but plays with a big heart. Clock uh, momentarily stopped now at 3.30 as Triway takes time out. And again, let us remind you, if you want to know what your area team did on Friday night, you can find out on CATV 9's weekend scoreboard. The scores will be shown every 15 minutes throughout the weekend right here on uh, Cable TV 9. Let us uh, remind you. Mount Union, that's right. <laughs> Good Methodist school here in Ohio. There you go. Again, while we have the opportunity, let us uh, thank uh, Athletic Director Ken Smith for his hospitality, along with uh, Doug Dye and all the others here at the, over at the College of Worcester next Saturday. There's a real hard run. I believe that is uh, huh. Dan Edwards, 32. No, I think no, that's Tony Lee. <laughs> Tony Lee's back in there. I can't figure that out. Well, maybe Coach McFarland wanted him to get his 100 yards tonight. I, I'm sure he's got it now, though. Block uh, continuing to run. We will be under three minutes here uh, very rapidly. Our score again is 21 to nothing. Worcester on top. This is the last year these two teams will meet. And it looks like Worcester will have taken the measure of this series 12 to 3.
McCoy, in trouble, couldn't find anybody, is flushed out of the pocket and dumped right near the 50-yard line. Riding him down again, number 61, Ron McCrail. I Ron just can't say enough out. about him, Tony. Terrific game tonight, both ways. And I see he's coming out now. He is a senior, a 6'2", 185-pound senior. remaining here in the ball game. It is a third and three situation. A little bit of a mix-up on that handoff. Burton never had a chance, and he is buried. John, I look down on the sideline there on the triway sideline, and I see a young fellow wearing a number 44 shirt with a uh, brace on his collar. Steve Beckler is back down here. I'm glad to see he's here and letting his Yes, Fellow maybe, teammates know that he is all right. Maybe if we get an opportunity, we can find him there and at least uh, get his back on the, the number. Real pleased to see that. It brings up a fourth down situation for the Generals. Matt Smith back to punt. Low snap, but he picks it up and kicks a line drive ball. Jeffers had trouble with it. It's off his hands, and there's a dog fight for the ball. Yeah, They're going to give it to Worcester. I think that's Bo Steiner, number 96. Bo is a uh, tight end for the Generals, a senior, and he came up with that fumble recovery. We're uh, trying to look right now for number 44, which is Steve Beckler. There you can see him on the sideline. He's got on his white jersey, and we're very, very pleased to see that that young man is back here at the stadium. He was taken as a precautionary measure to Worcester Community Hospital. X-rays were taken. McCoy on the first play passes out there to Smith, and it is no. completed about the 10-yard line. John, I think that was Matt Sleek, wasn't it? Oh, you're right. It's number 90, Mitch Sleek. And Worcester wants timeout. So with a minute and one second remaining on the clock, our score 21 to nothing. Wooster asks for time. It does give us one more last opportunity to mention to you that next week it will be Triway against Waynedale, and Wooster will be at home against Jackson. There is the Worcester huddle. Number 22 with his back uh, to us is Alex Alexander. Alex is a 5'10", 150-pound senior, a wide receiver. Worcester will go to 2-0 on the season. Triway will go to 0-2. And, and as we mentioned for both teams, the road continues to uh, get a little bit rougher. That ball is resting uh, just shy of the 10 yard line. Second down and a, a short one for the Generals. McCoy gives it to the tailback. No, he keeps the ball and he is in for the score. score. Good ball that handling, good he pulls me again. <laughs> Matt McCoy, who had uh, kept the ball on an extra point for a touchdown, scores this time. And uh, watching Matt run, you, you know he's gaining confidence each time, John. Well, of course, last week as a junior was his uh, first start. Uh, on the other side of the coin, uh, Scott uh, Flinner was called into action in the second half for the Titans. And I think he has shown an awful lot of poise, especially uh, for a sophomore tonight. Denny Shear to try the extra point for the Generals. And it is good. Yeah. So our score becomes 28 to nothing with 54 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. Let us remind you that the Worcester Scots open their season next Saturday against Mount Union under second year head coach Bob Tucker. And if you'd like to uh, hear timeout with Tucker, 
You can catch that Wednesday evenings on CATV9 at 6 p.m. John Finn will be talking with uh, Coach Bob Tucker about the uh, upcoming season and the upcoming game with Mount Union. Number 45, Denny Shear, who just uh, kicked the successful extra point, gets ready to kick off. There he's got the whistle. That ball is on the ground. It's going to be taken by one of the up men. No, Jeff Wilson picked it up. They're going to have to hold their breath as Wilson is a uh, bulldog down there. I'm looking for the uh, general. Number Looks 90. like Mitch Sleek, number 90. Tony, I mentioned, I think Coach Barron has to be holding his breath because they held uh, Jeff Wilson out of the quarterback slot because of that thigh bruise tonight. Oh, so he's I'm got a lot of new faces out there now, uh, John. Well, we're down to 40 seconds. Triway certainly would like to find a way get on, to get on the scoreboard, I'm sure. Flinner gives it off inside to number 39. And uh, again, we apologize that we do not have a, uh, a name for that number. 86, Matt Dye coming in with a play. I heard Eric. I thought he might have said Eric Houston, but I, I may be amiss. Tony, they do not even have time to get off uh, this play. The ball game is over. Our final score is the Worcester Generals 28, the Triway Titans nothing. Any uh, closing comments that you would like to make tonight? Tonight, John, the whole thing was in the trenches. Uh, I think uh, Worcester's line was just too much for Triway. Uh, they try to pass. Fifty for the first down. Smithville travels over to uh, Canton East, and West Holmes plays Dover. Seven fifty still remaining before the half. Again, our score: Worcester on top, fourteen to nothing. Tony Lee, the tailback for the Generals, junior tailback, has scored twice. That ball is just across the fifty at the forty-nine. High back, this time John Murphy on that inside handoff. John with good second effort down to about the 44-yard line. Number uh, 61 on that tackle is Rod McRail. Rod is the middle guard defensively, calls the signals, and he has been in on a group of tackles. said middle guard uh, where he is now stationed is is one of the two inside uh, middle linebackers Tony Lee off right tackle Tony's stumbling a little bit but uh, if they give him where he reached out and put the ball it'll be a first down I do not believe so he looked like a pro the way he stretched that uh, arm out to move the ball forward first down yes it is just inside the 40 yard line so Worcester again using the clock to march down the field. 6.45 remaining here in the second quarter of action. John Hayes, number 44, comes in, whispers the play to Matt McCoy, junior quarterback. Brian Finnegan, always the first man out of the huddle over the ball at center. Some defensive movement and now a whistle. Too much time. Wish to be penalized for delay of game. Tony, I'm trying to remember uh, in my mind here, is that the first penalty on the generals? No, no they had another second. penalty, didn't they? A five-yard penalty. Uh, yeah, they movement were in the line. Right. That's right. This moves the ball back to the 44-yard uh, line. 
and makes it a first and 15 situation for the general. Mitch Fleek, number 90, comes to the bottom of your screen. John Murphy is on uh, the wing to the bottom of your screen and now goes in motion to the top of your screen. Tony Lee, the tailback, breaks one tackle and is back down close to the 40. And on the bottom of that pile is number 61 again, Rod McGrail. We'll uh, call that a gain of four for Tony Lee and make it to second and 11. John Hayes to the bottom of your screen, split wide. John Murphy wide to the top. Bird Nolan Lee, the handoff is to Tony Lee, left tackle. And he got two or three, but the yardage is getting uh, much tougher inside for the Worcester offense as Triway begins to tighten down very nicely. Brings up a third and nine situation. And now Worcester is asking for timeout. Here comes Coach McFarland out onto the field with the 5.08 then remaining here in the first half. Again, our score, Worcester 14, Triway nothing. We'll break and be right back. Enjoy great movies like Back to the Future and Return of the Jedi in the comfort of your own home. Just stop by Dino's Home Movies in Worcester and Smithville. With over 1,800 movies to choose from, Dino's has the movie you're looking for no matter what kind. And if you don't have a VCR, rent one from Dino's Home Movies at the foot of Bell Avenue in downtown Worcester and on Main Street in Smithville. It's Dino's Home Movies, open seven days a week. Edinger's Furniture has bedroom sets. Fine craftsmanship by fine names, like Burlington and Impact. At Edinger's, you'll find dining room furniture, a large selection, priced to fit your pocketbook. Take a look at this three-piece living room set. Edinger's Furniture specializes in top-quality, well-built furniture that looks good in any home. They also carry mobile home supplies, like replacement doors and plastic pipe. Edinger's Furniture in the Hex Shopping Center on Lincolnway East in Worcester. Stop by today. Coach McFarlane out with his team, Coach Barron out with his, uh, talking over what the each feels they need to do. For the Titans, it's continued to be stingy inside. They are getting tougher, Tony, against uh, Worcester's run. I would look to see uh, Coach McFarlane open up a little bit. He's been running nothing but plays up into the middle. Third down and nine, Murphy in motion to the bottom of your screen. And there is the first pass. McCoy throws it across the middle. It is intercepted. It is uh, number 45, Chris Jeffers, who has dropped back. John Murphy throws him to the ground at about the 34-yard line. Matt McCoy's pass was thrown over the middle. Coach Barron, I think, had his defense ready for that one, Tony. Chris Jeffers was in excellent position to pick that one off. I think he waited just a little bit too long to throw it, and when he did, the man was spanning right his way. So, Dryway goes back to the offense. Worcester on defense. Split backs now behind this sophomore quarterback, Scott Flinner. Where's number nine on his jersey? He's got Aaron Swisher and Chris Jeffers. 4.53 remaining in the half. The handoff is to uh, Jeffers. Jeffers. Gets forward right. for about three or four. Number 25, Matt Totten, one of the inside linebackers on the tackle for the Generals. We'll call that a good three yards and call it second and seven. The ball is resting on about the 38-yard line of the Titans. And again, the split back. Jason Johnson, number 21, flanked to the top of your screen for Triway. Worcester with a little last minute shifting. Splinter down the line, looked like he wanted to pass it. He had to eat that ball, Tony. 
They put him back to the line of scrimmage, John. 78, uh, McLean, Mike McLean, one of the Worcester generals in on that tackle. But uh, Flinner probably uh, saw that his man was not open. He took the only course available, and that was a heady play for a sophomore. He could have thrown a, a bad pass, but he, he ate it instead. Brings up a third in uh, seven situation. Flinner rolling out to his left. He is being chased by Glasgow, who finally brings him down. And that was a loss of about two. Scott Glasgow, who was an inside linebacker, showed me pretty good speed in chasing down Scott uh, Flinner. Of course, Scott was not uh, using all his speed. He was still looking downfield. He wanted to, to throw. Here's uh, Jeff Wilson. Jeff uh, being called upon because of the injury to Steve Beckler, who was taken to uh, Worcester Community Hospital. There's a nice, nice kick taken by John Murphy on about the 37. He's giving some ground now to the outside. Nice spin move. Gets away from several tacklers and is back to about the 46. Nice run line. back. Over there for Triway, I'm trying to pick up a number. Looks like Brett Landman, number 82, 6'4", uh, uh, tight end. He's been a real workhorse on defense. So Worcester again uh, comes up with pretty good field position. Ball right uh, across the 45-yard line. 246 remaining here in the first quarter of action. Worcester with one more chance to uh, uh, march the ball down the field but time a little bit of an ally for the Titans. A lot of razzle dazzle. Who did end up with that ball? I believe it's John Murphy and not much doing. Maybe a yard, but boy, Tony, I could hear the pop all the way up here. And again, I see number 61, Rob McGrail on the, the bottom of the pile. He is a real tiger defensively. Clock uh, continuing to uh, move right along. We're down to two minutes. Mitch Leak to the bottom of your screen, Murphy to the top. It is Brett Birdno uh, for short yardage up the middle. Matt McCoy has only thrown one pass this evening. That uh, was complete. However, it was completed to a purple jersey. Well, you know what William Hayes used to say, John? Time you pass, three things can happen. And two of them are bad. I, uh, I've heard that philosophy, but uh, with the <laughs> clock down to 124, I would think the generals would have to put it on the, in the air. It's a pass. Hayes in motion this time. No, it's oh. a draw play to Tony Lee. He's got some running room. He's got the first down, or he's very I close. I do not believe he's got it. He's flipped down, trying to make a cut. And, and Tony, you may be right. It is very close here. I think we'll probably have a timeout while they measure. I'm sure they will measure it. No, they give it to them. They're not measure it. it well, that close though. Yes, it was very close. <laughs> the clock is momentarily stopped with a minute and ten while they move the chains. But then it will start again, and there it goes. Mike McLean comes out, number 78. Mitch Leak to the top of your screen. Hayes again in motion on the wing. McCoy goes back to pass. It's down the field. It's to Mitch Leak. It is knocked down and almost intercepted. It was thrown behind Mitch Leak. And number 41 out there on the coverage was Dave Fletcher. And Dave almost had an interception. Now that does stop the clock with 47 seconds remaining. And now... Byway is asking for timeout with 47 seconds remaining. It's been an exciting uh, first half of action. Worcester punching a ball in first from about uh, four yards, Tony Lee. The uh, kick for the extra point was no good. Worcester held a six to nothing lead. Worcester then again able to uh, go in from about seven yards, Tony Lee capping off that drive. And then uh, going for the two points, it was uh, quarterback keeper by Matt McCoy, which gave Worcester the 14 to nothing lead they enjoyed here 
with 47 seconds remaining. We might mention, uh, we sure would encourage you to stay tuned at halftime because we will have both bands on tonight, both bands performing, Flyway and Worcester. And uh, both of them always put on an outstanding show. John, this uh, looks as uh, a repeat of last week. Uh, the Generals uh, went right down the field last week, two times in the first quarter and scored. They didn't do anything in the second quarter, and we've done identically the same thing uh, tonight. Yes, very similar. And we've got 47 seconds to change that. <laughs> well, Coach McFarland, you saw him jogging off the field. Now John Murphy trying to adjust his uh, position to the bottom of your screen. McCoy back to pass, looking down the field. Let's fly for John Hayes. It's a little behind him. Did he get it or not? Nope. No, they say he trapped it. John Hayes is <laughs> trying to show the official exactly <laughs> how he caught it, but the official had good position, and he says no, it was a trap. John has been out there. He and Matt Fle uh, Nick Fleet both were out there. Uh, McCord needed just a little bit more power in that arm. It was a long throw. It was to the open side of the field, the top of your picture. And as Tony indicates, Matt maybe needed just a little more on that ball. It is a third and ten situation. Again, McCoy back to pass. He throws it this time for Murphy. Murphy was bumped, and there is a flag. Dave Fletcher and John Murphy, there, there was a collision. There was contact uh, just before the ball arrived. The yellow flag did go down, <coughs> and it could be a costly penalty for the t against the Titans. Chris Jeffers is certainly uh, upset with it. That's another position. one of those calls, John. If the defender had been facing towards the ball, there wouldn't have been any call. I, d I don't believe it. Um, but if it was, he was defending the man, and he was going right at him without even looking at the ball. I think that's a good point to make, uh, Tony. With the penalty, it gives the generals a first down. Remember, that was a third and ten situation. It is just inside the 30-yard line. The clock is stopped with 36 seconds remaining here in the first half. If they are passes, probably enough time for at least uh, three, four plays. McCoy, it's a little pass out there. It is taken by John Murphy. He's still on his feet. He scooted down to inside the 20-yard line, and they are calling a timeout for Worcester. John Murphy was slow in getting up. Now he is up. John, of course, is a two-way performer for the Generals, defensive back, offensive uh, uh, wide receiver, and he is an interesting story because he was a... Uh, originally a quarterback and he was converted last year because he was such a good athlete to a wide receiver and had a fine season last year Tony he as certainly a did and he seems to be an all around type ball player he loves to hit and he plays just as well on defense as he does on offense he runs back punch and kick off I thought he fumbled that ball that time John well, no, I think he kept, uh, I won't say crawling, because crawling would imply that his knees were on the ground, yeah. but he was uh, bear crawling, I guess, uh, <laughs> and the official allowed that uh, bear crawling yardage. Of course, that action is taking uh, place quite a distance from where we are. Uh, we want to thank, by the way, Triway High School for their hospitality tonight in allowing us to come over to uh, film this game. The... Uh, we are, are very appreciative of uh, their hospitality. Doug Dye is the uh, athletic director. No? Hospitality. Okay. Doug uh, is uh, the man who uh, provided the hospitality. Kent Smith is the AD, and we thank him as well. Boy, it's great to have a producer that keeps you straight. <laughs> okay, 28 seconds remaining. Worcester with the ball just inside the 20-yard line. That's Murphy in motion to the bottom of your screen. There are flags and whistles and uh, bells and all kinds of stuff. And uh, I just have a feeling it's against the generals. 
<laughs> and now I really do as they march back, Tony. No legal procedure. So Dryway will certainly accept this five yards, which will mark the ball back to uh, between the 23, 24 yard line. Clock, of course, uh, remains at 26 seconds because that uh, uh, penalty occurred before the ball was snapped. High backs, Birdno and Tony Lee behind Matt McCoy. Murphy again in motion. Looking, looking. The ball is down there. There's a man open. Matt Smith. Matt Smith. Touchdown. 23-yard touchdown to Matt Smith. This time they look to the wide side. McCoy did at Murphy and uh, Sleek and then threw it back to the tight end, Matt Smith. Matt making a nice uh, over-the-shoulder catch for the six points. That broke our second quarter jinx, John. <laughs> Worcester on the scoreboard again with 20 seconds remaining and goes up to a 20 to nothing lead. Denny Shear comes in to try the extra point uh, kick this time. Mitch Sleek to hold. This one is up. And this one is good. So our score seconds remaining is Well, Tony, uh, for the generals who uh, have struggled at least uh, you know, in the passing game, that has to give the junior quarterback, uh, Matt McCoy, a, a big left to be able to, to get that ball in the end zone. He certainly does, and uh, I don't know if you noticed on that last pass, he's in that. He didn't just lob that. Uh, I think some of his others were thrown a little on the soft side. Uh, that time there, he, he caught Matt Smith out there, and he threw him the ball and threw it in a hurry. For you I think that's what he's going to have to do to, uh, to succeed as far as uh, throwing that ball. I think you're right. For the Titan fans, that, uh, that really hurt. That uh, score uh, with under a minute remaining in the first half, uh, 20 seconds. We've got Jeff Wilson and uh, number 41, Dave Fletcher deep. They'll be trying to uh, get as much as they can and maybe then step out of bounds. Kick is to the top of the field. It's to Jeff Wilson. He fields it uh, on the 10 yard line, back up, making a nice cut to the other side of the field. He was tripped up there on about the 35. And it was the kicker again, Shear. Denny Shear, number 45. Clock stops uh, momentarily at 14 seconds. It will be running again, and Triway may not be able to get off a of play. Well, let's wait and see. Coach uh, Bill Barron may want to regroup. It's at eight seconds. Let's see if they're able to get this play off. Number one, Wally Williams, flanked wide to the bottom of your screen. No, they do not have enough time. So at the end of the first half, our score is the Worcester Generals 21, the Triway Titans nothing. Stay tuned for the halftime show with the band. Hi, I'm Tom Lyons, Performance Pontiac Gold GMC Truck, 1363 Lincoln Way West, Worcester. Stop and see me. Take advantage of our low financing, dependable vehicles, and courteous service. That's Tom Lyons, Performance Pontiac Gold GMC Truck, your complete transportation center. Dennis Hobson, but most people call me Hop. I'm a junior guard on the Ohio State basketball team, taking a lot of hard work to get where I am today, but that didn't leave time for drugs or alcohol. Not everybody can play basketball like I do, but everybody can work hard to be all they can be, and drugs and alcohol stop you from doing all you can do. So find something you enjoy and throw yourself into it. You'll get a high that will last your life.
TV Guide, America's most authoritative television magazine, has a number for you. And a number of important facts we think you should know. Here's the number. Keep it in mind, because it's your access to more entertainment options than ever before. That number is the key to the single biggest selling television guide in America's cable homes. And for only $2 added to your monthly cable bill, you can get TV Guide delivered right to your door every week. Just call 1-800-345-8500, extension 950. Now, TV Guide magazine has been around for over three decades, so you may think you already have our number. But if you haven't seen TV Guide lately, you haven't seen TV Guide. This handy little magazine offers you more than ever before on cable, network, and pay TV. More news and clues on what to watch and when to watch and who to watch and why to watch them. TV Guide whets your appetite for the week ahead with previews and features on upcoming shows, plus movie reviews you can really rely on. And there's the alphabetical pay TV movie guide, which describes all the movies offered by the premium services for a full two weeks with ratings so you can keep an eye on what the children watch. Check out the sports calendar. Day by day and round the clock, our TV sports highlights put you in the thick of the action. Then, look behind the scenes and meet the shining stars and the rising stars. The folks who make jokes, make news, make money, and make your day. So whether you're a movie buff, news nut, football aficionado, boxing enthusiast, or just someone with a rock and roll heart, TV Guide has your viewing options covered. Call toll-free 1-800-345-8500, extension 950. You can order TV Guide for just $2 added to your monthly cable bill. That's 1-800-345-8500, extension 950 for TV Guide. You've got our number. Now, get the number one television guide in America's cable homes. We certainly hope you enjoyed the halftime show with the band. Both teams are back out on the field warming up. And, uh, Tony, while we have a second, why don't you run down uh, what you have in first-half statistics? Well, John, the, the first stat, which I think is the most important, uh, young, young Steve Beckler was taken to the hospital. X-rays were taken, and uh, uh, there was nothing serious. And uh, we're glad of that, and we certainly hope that uh, he'll be back out here to let his teammates know that he is all right. That's, that's great news right off the bat. As far as the uh, stats, we'll go with team stats. Uh, first downs, Worcester was way ahead. Uh, Worcester had 11 first downs and Triways won. The rushing department, Worcester ran 25 times for 131 yards. The Triways, 13 tries for 17 yards. Passing, uh, Worcester had two completions out of five tries and one interception for a total of 34 yards. And one of those being a 23-yard pass to uh, Smith for a touchdown. Fumbles, Worcester had one fumble, but uh, didn't lose any. And penalties, Worcester was penalized four times for 20 yards. A try away eight, four times for 35. Individual stats, Tony Lee uh, was the leading ball carrier, 18 tries for 96 yards. Bird notes, three carries for four yards for Worcester. Well, Murphy had three carries for 15. McCoy, one carry for four. For try away, Jeffers was the leading ball carrier. From five tries at 13 yards. Uh, Flinner had uh, five tries for a total of five yards. Of course, he was dumped a couple times, which kind of cut him down. Swisher had three tries for a minus one. Well, I think the statistics oftentimes do uh, tell the story. And, of course, uh, Worcester was hoping to shut down Fryway's running game, and, and the statistics would indicate that they did that pretty effectively. On the other hand, Worcester's Tony Lee, with that 96 yards in the first half, uh, has uh, really helped out the generals, and, and that's probably uh, certainly a disappointment to coach uh, Bill Barron. Although in that second quarter, I thought Triway's defense did a much better job of shutting down Tony Lee. They, and, uh, uh, they, they did, John, and they seemed like they were ready to start moving, but I, I don't think that they were going to be able to run against Worcester's line. I still think that if they're going to do anything, they're going to have to give the uh, young Flinner some uh, protection and let him throw the air that ball. I mean, he's got a couple good receivers. Number 82 is uh, Brett uh, Landman. Yep. Uh, he's a good ball uh, receiver. Uh, I watched him the last two years, remember, when we played. And he did very well then. 
Now he's a senior, and this, this is his last chance. Uh, Bakey is another one. But uh, Flinner's going to have to have some time to get the ball to him. Well, the thing that uh, Flinner was trying to do on that last uh, pass was roll out to get, get it by a little bit more time to get away uh, from the rush. But uh, Doug Glasgow was able to run him down. We're just about ready for the uh, second half kickoff. Back deep for the Generals. Tony Lee is in the middle. It's a squib kick. Rolling picked up. I can't spot a number right there. We'll try and pick it up for you as the ball is run back to about the 34-yard line. 32, Dan Edwards returning it for the uh, Worcester General. Brett Landman, the gentleman we were talking about uh, just a second ago, was in on the tackle, and Brett uh, made a group along with uh, Rod McCrail tonight. First down for the Generals, I back, Murphy in motion. The give is to Tony Lee off right tackle, and Tony gets to three tough yards before he is brought down. There's Rod McCrail, 61, also 82, Brett Landman. The ball is down to about the 38-yard line. Give Tony three, make it second seven. Matt McCoy waiting for the play. Here comes John Hayes, number 44, in with it. Ryan Finnecum, number 59, out over the ball at center. McCoy, again, it's Tony Lee. Lee was really decked after a pickup of about three. And Tony... The number that's going to be tattooed on Tony Lee's chest is number 61, mm -hmm. Rod McCrail. He is a real hitter. His uh, stats in the program are 6'2", 195, and he certainly is playing like a, a giant tonight defensively for the Titans. It brings up a third down in four situations for Worcester. And this time, McCoy back to pass, and he is going to be decked. Nice play by number 65, Doug Rastetter. Rastetter wasn't going for the fakes, and he drops uh, McCoy back for about a 12-yard uh, loss. Check that. Uh, not 12. Yeah, about 12 yards. Brings up a fourth and 17. The ball back on the 28-yard line of the Generals. And it will be Matt Smith, number 18, doing the punting. Matt had one blocked last week, so I know uh, Coach McFarland spent a lot of time. It's a high, fairly short punt. It looks like it's going to be uh, rolling dead inside the 40, mm -hmm. inside the 35. We've got a flag back here, though. Yes, way back uh, upfield, there is a flag. One of the officials pointing it out to the referee. And their legal procedure against the Generals. It may cost the Generals five more yards if Dryway decides to make them punt it again. The options are being explained to, uh, I believe that's 61, Rod McCrail. Matt Smith may have to kick it again. We still got 9.30 remaining in the third quarter of action. The score again, Worcester 21. Triway nothing. We are at Triway High School, Triway Field. John Hevlin along with Tony Catanza right. Matt Smith now punting from uh, about his own 10-yard line. And this one is high, but very short. Very, very short, and it takes a triway bounce and is down inside the 40. Dan Edwards, 32 of the Generals, downing that ball. Matt had a lot of height, Tony, but not much distance no on distance that one. whatsoever. Tony, while we have the teams uh, changing out there, we're going to take a quick break and be right back. Hi, I'm Tom Lyons, Performance Pontiac Colts GMC Truck, 1363 Lincoln Way West, Worcester. 
Stop and see me. Take advantage of our low financing, dependable vehicles, and courteous service. That's Tom Lyon, Performance Pontiac Gold GMC Truck, your complete transportation center. guard on the Ohio State women's basketball team. I really enjoy playing basketball, not because I'm good at it, but because I give it my all. And I couldn't do that if I consumed alcohol, and neither can you. Find yourself a sport or activity that you can give it your all, and stay away from alcohol. If you're dedicated enough to your sport or activity, you'll know enough to say no to alcohol. Brought to you by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Cable Television Association. Why we break the huddle? They've got uh, those triple backs behind the sophomore quarterback, Scott Slinner. Jeffers is the tailback in this uh, particular setup, and he gets good yardage. Five yards. Finally bringing him down is Andy Seifert, number 53, one of the defensive tackles for the Generals. Chris looked very uh, strong and, and uh, running hard on that play. Second down and uh, five. And there's Jeffers again for good yardage. He's very close to the first down, being gang tackled now by the Generals. It uh, all right depends on the, on the spot. Line. Yeah. So he'll be shy about a yard, John. You are right, Tony. He's uh, shy by less than a yard as they mark that ball. But if I'm not mistaken, this is the Titans' uh, deepest penetration into Worcester territory tonight. Eight minutes remaining here in the third quarter of action. Split backs this time behind Slinner. And uh, Slinner on a keeper fumbles the ball. It's loose. And I believe Worcester's got it. Yes, they do. Very unfortunate for Triway. Slender looks like he may have hurt his hand. He's uh, coming off holding his hand. <coughs> his hand was hit as he went to make the turn up, and that's when he lost the ball. 